Hello, everybody. Welcome to session three of TCP IP Basics. My name is Han Song Bei, and I'm going to walk you through sequence number. This will be sequence number part two. If you're new here, there's a whole playlist I'll link to the description. So watch session one and two and three. And I'll repeat this maybe once or twice more. So the, the openings um, you saw here, this border, that the blue border that you see, that essentially means that this is the actual TCP IP concepts that we'll be talking about. If you see this orange border, that means it's a Q&A, which is a follow-up to a session. It says session two here, but that's not important. So if there's enough questions from the, the blue session, meaning the actual TCP IP session, I'll do a, a in-depth review or a Q&A session using that brown orange thumbnail. And if you see a green thumbnail, then it's just an industry vlog of various topics. I think I have one coming up on major fails that I've committed, well, party two, instigated, however you want to say it. On And so because I think it's important to know that as instructors at SharkFest or industry veterans, you know, kind of old hands, if you will, or quote unquote experts in a particular field, people still make mistakes. And it's how you learn from that and move on that's important. So I got a couple of doozies that uh, I think you'll enjoy. So look out for the thumbnail, the green thumbnail, as we tackle the topics. But again, when you see the blue, that's the actual technical content. So this was supposed to be TCP uh, session SIN, well, SIN Saturday. Unfortunately, that didn't happen because I had an issue with, I don't know how many, saw, how many of you saw my uh, community post, but I had a problem with my home wiring, believe it or not. So what happened was, in short, we moved, we rearranged my son's room. It's in the second floor. So even though it's four levels that you see here, basement, garage, first level, second floor, it's not all, I don't live in a four, you know, four level, uh, $10 million condo in Manhattan by any means. So this is a condo where first and second floor is um, mine. And then the other two floors are my neighbors. So it's kind of like intertwined condo. And then garage is mine and basement is a common basement. But I ran cables everywhere. And there was a, a problem with the cable after the move. So I ended up troubleshooting most of the day because I didn't suspect that the actual wire itself went bad. So, of course, I, you know, the first rule of troubleshooting, whatever happened last, that's probably the culprit start there, which I did. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't the connectors. It wasn't the jacks. It wasn't any of that. So I kept ruling things out. And then finally, I said, okay, I have nothing left but the actual wiring. And my wife came home then. And she said, oh, you know, I meant to tell you that when we were moving the bed, that the Ethernet cable was kinked under and kind of bent. And the bed, I guess, when we picked it up and put it down, it landed on top of that. So that was enough to break the, and we had, you know, on again, off again, connectivity from the second floor to the FIO service. So anyway, um, it's not often that the wiring actually goes bad, but of course, in my case, it was. What are you going to do, right? All right, so today's topic is going to be on sequence numbers again. So the session two was about sequence numbers, the logical concept. And someone asked and said, hey, wait a minute, um, shouldn't the numbers be actually plus one? So conceptually, we talked about how, you know, sequence number represents the amount of data that was transferred. And that's all it is. Sequence number is nothing more than how much data have I transferred. And as troubleshooters, this is what we're going to concentrate on most. How much data was transferred and why wasn't it acknowledged or why was the acknowledgement different than what I expect? This is a very, very fundamental and important concept you need to master. And so we'll talk about that a little bit more. And while this is a Wireshark course, I believe that these are fundamental things that we need to be aware of. So we're going to hit these topics first and then we'll jump into Wireshark. I think we're a couple of sessions away, um, but we may accelerate that depending on, okay? So, all right, so let's go to here, and let me put myself there. Um, maybe I'll go here. Actually, it might be better. All right, so I'm trying something new in case. Um, let me go back to camera. So the thing about these wireless pens is you have to charge them. So if you don't charge them, you end up having to do this. So what are you going to do, right? Okay, so session three, sequence number. So we talked about sequence number being nothing more than um, 
data amount of data being transferred. And what about the acknowledgement? So we hit this as well, but let me just review quickly. Okay, so if we have the PC here talking to server here, and we're transferring data from PC to the server. Okay, so this is a post upload, if you will. And we said that initially, uh, you pick any sequence number, initial sequence number, it's a random number. We're gonna start with um, zero this time. Okay, so we're gonna start with initial sequence number that we talked about equal to zero. And if I send 10 bytes, and so here's a packet with uh, 10 bytes of data, and it's being sent over here. The two things that you need to keep track of are the next expected sequence number, oops, next expected sequence number, which is what? Remember how we said in the first session, think about train conductor. If you sent 10 passengers to the other side, who do you start with next? That's the next expected sequence number. So of course, if you send 10, the next passenger number is going to be 11. And that, it turns out, is equal to the acknowledgement of 11. Okay. So what are we talking about here? Let me just recap again. It sounds simple, but you will get wrapped around the axle if you don't fully understand this and commit this to memory. So you take your sequence number, whatever it is. In this case, we chose zero. Okay. We sent 10 bytes. So we add the, se the sequence number plus 10 bytes that comes out to 10. But we're keeping track of the next expected sequence number, which is 11, which turns out to be the acknowledgement number 11 as well. Okay, so put it into layman's term. I sent you 10 bytes. I'm going to start, I'm going to start with 11th byte. 11th passenger, and the other side acknowledges by saying, I want you to start with 11 as well. That's fundamentally how it works. Now, so why did I say, and why did that person make a note that, hey, aren't you off by one? So let me do a deep dive onto that, okay? And the reason why Wireshark starts with initial sequence number of zero is because if we all know that every connection begins with sin, sin act, and act. Okay. So I just talked about the last two sessions, the last session in here about how sequence number represents data. So the question you have to ask yourself is, in a SYN-only packet, is there any data in there? There isn't. There are options about what your capabilities are. My receive window, my MSS size that I will support from you, whether I do selective acknowledgement, whether I do ECN, uh, explicit congestion notification, whether I'm gonna do window, uh, window factor and window um, multiplier, et cetera. Okay, those are all things that you negotiate, but it's not the data itself. These are all control part of TCP itself. So how do we talk about passengers, in my example, if I don't have any passengers? Okay, so we make it up. We put a ghost passenger on a SYN packet. Okay. So here, initial sequence number is zero, just a relative number, so we're gonna use zero and we sent this SYN packet to the other side. And what we end up is, in, from a TCP perspective, we treat SYN flagged packets. Any packet that has a SYN flag set will carry one byte of ghost data. I say ghost data because there isn't data that the application is sending. This is just TCP saying, you know what? I'm gonna pretend there's a passenger here. That way, you can acknowledge with passenger number one, okay? Meaning I'm sending zero and I sent one byte of data so I can acknowledge that packet. So why is this acknowledgement important? Because remember, acknowledgements are only for data packets. 
if you don't send data, the other side doesn't act. Okay? Conversely, if act goes missing, it's just it's a packet with just acknowledgement on it. No one cares. Okay? Acknowledgement packets can get lost forever and no one will care. Okay? And I want you to think about this and explain to me why what I said is important. Why is it that the acknowledgement numbers, only if it only carries acknowledgement numbers and it goes missing, no one cares? Think about that. Okay? You need to understand these concepts. So I'm not going to give the answer right away. I want you to just think about what I said. If ACK goes missing, if ACK only, or naked ACK as I call them, goes missing, nobody cares. Why is that? Okay? The other part of this equation is, if the SYN packet here doesn't have any data, how do I force the other side to acknowledge that? I'm not sending any data. How do I force you to acknowledge it? Because we all agree that any SYN or SYN ACK increments the sequence number by one, even though there's no data. That's just the rules that TCP laid out. Okay? And this is why before we even start, so once we've done the SYN, and then he sets a SYN on the return path here. Remember, TCP is a duplex communication, right? Both sides can talk at the same time. And so because he set the SYN here, you have to acknowledge, and because he also sent SYN here, he has to acknowledge. Okay, so this is the PC on this side, server on this side. Okay, hope that was clear. And this is why by the time you start to transfer, you've already incremented the counter by one passenger. Okay, you're never going to start with zeroth passenger. You'll always start with passenger one because of SYN and SYNAC. You might be thinking, wait a minute, if this sin here and this sin here generated sin and sin that's two bytes, why is the acknowledgement number one? Because remember, it's a duplex communication. The sin that hap the sequence number that happens to go from PC to server has nothing, nothing to do with the sin or sequence number going from the server to PC completely independent and that's why we're always going to concentrate on unidirectional transfer first so we don't get confused okay so it seems like i'm harping on a simple concept right so the first one is that okay i track how many bytes i've sent by telling you i'm going to start with passenger number 11 because i've sent you 10 bytes let me repeat that I'm going to start with passenger 11 because I've sent 10 passengers to you. And then the other side says, okay, I received 10, but I'm going to acknowledge that you should start with 11. So there's some symmetry there. My next expected sequence number, right? This is what we talked about here. The next expected sequence number is 11, and it also matches Acknowledgement number 11, okay? Again, I'm harping because this is important. I'm not saying I received 11 bytes. That's not what I'm saying here at all, okay? I'm saying I received 10. The next time you start, start with 11. And of course, that matches up with next expected sequence number 11. I've said this five, six, seven different ways, but it's important. Because if you don't understand this, you cannot do TCP analysis. You cannot use Wireshark, period. It's that fundamental. Okay. So I want you to think about, so the homework for the readers is, why is it that if a na naked act goes missing, nobody cares? Okay. Again, naked acts, not a piggyback act, meaning there's data that I'm sending to you, um, and on top of that, there's this... I'm sending you this amount of data and I set the act bit here. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just an acknowledgement. So think about that because these are the topics that you must master so that we can do sequence number analysis. Here's the other thing why this is more and more important. Everything is going to TLS 1.3. Most of it is TLS 1.2 today. Okay? And as more and more encryption happens, you're not going to get you're not going to be privy to the actual HTTP request. You're going to have to use something like Fiddler 
so that you can see it from the PC itself and then match it up with Socket Conversation. A little bit more onerous, but not that much more difficult either. Of course, if you're troubleshooting from afar, meaning you're not at the, at the PC troubleshooting, okay, so if you're not sitting here, if you're not sitting here doing trace files, you're not going to be able to capture it. Okay, use Fiddler, I mean. Okay, so anyway, this is why making sure that you understand sequence numbers is so important, and we'll go into examples of very, very erroneous sequence number analysis that can throw off a beginner troubleshooter. But if you understand the fundamental concepts that I laid out, you'll be fine. Okay, and here's the part: you need to be so well versed in this topic that you can concretely say this is impossible this cannot happen okay. or because xyz happened that implies that abc occurred that comes with experience but you have to first know how to spot those before you can extrapolate what the problem might be if this doesn't make sense stay tuned to those green thumbnail vlogs that i'll talk about how do you know what you don't know? Okay, I got a very interesting email from a reader saying, hey, um, you talk about foundational knowledge, but how do I know I don't or do have that foundational knowledge? In other words, how do I know something that I don't know, right? It sounds like an oxymoron. Um, oxymoron is not the right word for that, right? It's um, nonsensical, maybe is a better word for it, but I'll talk about that. And these questions that I'm firing to you is what builds that library library of things that make you go, wait a minute, this is impossible. This cannot happen. Therefore, something else must be wrong. Maybe the capture was wrong. Maybe the capture point was incomplete. Okay, that's how well you need to be. That's how well you have to know the topic of sequence number analysis. Okay. All right. So we're getting, again, I know I keep teasing, but we're getting close to doing actual packet analysis. But these are very, very important topics, so I want to harp on them over and over and over and over in case you haven't noticed. And with that, I'll sign off, and we'll talk to you next week. Uh, next week's session will probably be a, a vlog, unless there's a lot of questions generated by this, in which case we'll have the orange thumbnail Q&A. All right, have a good weekend, everybody. What's left of it anyway? Take care.